and welcome to the Oddity Archive, an uncharacteristically voyeuristic edition of the Oddity Archive. But uh, uh, let me explain. Normally when I find old audio cassettes, be it at a thrift store or just wherever, I generally don't pay a whole lot of heed. I mean, maybe I'll find some out-of-print album or something once in a while, and I'll pick that up. But generally, I don't really bother much with the audio tapes. But lately, especially in the last three months or so, I have been finding some tapes that just look way too interesting to pass up. And, of course, always being on the hunt for that next archive topic, I've been picking these things up. And so, of course, that's naturally what today's episode is about, and uh, what I've got for you today are seven of these tapes that I have found, and uh, some of these are actually people's personal, private recordings. And in an attempt, admittedly kind of a half-assed attempt at keeping things from getting a little too uncomfortable, I'm going to try and keep the pendulum swinging between these more personal tapes and more just general oddball stuff that I have found. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started here with our first tape. And this one I admittedly only picked up because I thought it looked really, really old. And uh, I was right, but more on that in a minute. Uh, and I also picked it up because I was kind of amused that apparently the electric shaver people also once made audio tapes. But I soon found out that the tape in here does not correspond to the shell. So it says this is for a 60-minute tape. This is a 90-minute tape in here. But it's made by the same company, and it seems to be from about the same period. Uh, anyway, the tape is labeled as RMPPA board, as in somebody recorded a board meeting. And uh, I soon found out that RMPPA stands for Rocky Mountain Professional Photographers Association. And um, I also was able to deduce that this dates to either late 1971 or early 1972. So this is definitely a very old tape. Um, but most of this was just boring as sin. But once in a while, something would just catch my ear. And either these people had some very unique professional jargon, or they had some rather unique, shall we say, extracurriculars. Our dates are firm, incidentally, with a broad mark. Yes. 22 through 25, March 1972. Oh, I put the wrong dates. It's on the station, right? 22 to 25, March. That's going to be a lot better date. Um, Except that it's, unless no, Nebraska one, changed theirs, it's going to screw us. Uh, yeah, because uh, now and we, uh, I just got in a new business. Uh, so let's stay on that one a moment. What kind of a hooker can we put in this thing? What well, uh, can we do? Yeah. I mean, now here we are. Dunks come all the way down here from Montana, and we can't do anything officially. Now, this is unreasonable as hell. It's unreasonable any time you expect these guys to come all from all over the country anyway. Okay, we but, have a point. Mr. Chin, you talked to me earlier this morning, I think it was you. Now, now I, won't, I won't point fingers. But, look, are we? if we're going to have a... Uh, biannual... Convention. Our next tape, and it's an unmarked one, uh, this I picked up for two reasons. Um, one, I had no idea that EMI ever made blank audio tapes, and two, I was really surprised to see Nipper the Dog on an EMI anything, uh, because I've always associated Nipper with RCA. But as I found very quickly, just through a basic internet search, it's actually RCA that's been borrowing Nipper all these years. But uh, anyway, this is a British-made cassette, and I guess that's appropriate here because what we've got is a selection of 13 poems as read by some teenager, and this kid had a definite Anglophile streak. I mean, it's almost entirely 19th century British poetry, 
And this kid is reading in just the most absurdly broad, fake British accent I have ever heard. And to make things even weirder, this kid had a bit of an androgynous streak. So um, just naturally, based on the voice, I'm really not 100% certain of this kid's gender. But uh, either way, no matter how you slice it, this is some genuine grade A high school drama nerd stuff here. The Leaden Echo and the Golden Echo by Gerard Manley Hopkins. How to keep? Is there any any? Is there none such, nowhere, known some? Bow or brooch or braid or brace? Lace, latch, or catch, or key to keep back beauty. Keep it. Beauty, beauty, beauty from vanishing away. Rock and wrinkle, drooping, dying, death's worst winding sheets. Tombs and worms and tumbling to decay. So be beginning. Be beginning to despair. Oh, there's none. No, 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 there's none. Be beginning to despair. To despair. 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 Never swallows. Bat. The swallows are gone. At a wavering instant, the swallows give way to bats by the Ponte Vecchio, changing guard. Bats, and an uneasy creeping in one's scalp as the bats swoop overhead, flying madly. Cried the navy blue ghost of Mr. Belaker, the Allegro Negro cocktail shaker. Why did the cock crow? Why am I lost down the endless road to infinity dust? The tropical leaves are whispering white as water. I race the wind in my flight. The white lace houses are carried away by the tide. Far out they float and sway. Words by Edward Thomas. Out of us all that make rhymes, Will you choose sometimes, as the winds use a crack in a wall or a drain, their joy or their pain to whistle through? Choose me, you English words. I know you. You are light as dreams, tough as oak, precious as gold, as poppies and corn, or an old cloak. The Wind Hover by Gerard Manley Hopkins. I caught this morning, morning's minion. Kingdom of Daylight's Dauphin, Dapple Dawn Drawn Falcon, in his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady air. This next tape is the first of two pre-recorded mass-manufactured tapes that we're going to be looking at today. And this is a, a collection of prefab answering machine greetings that AT&T put out back in 1992. And uh, they are every bit as obnoxious as you would expect. But uh, obviously the idea was to take uh, like a separate tape deck or your stereo or whatever and then try and pipe the sound into the built-in microphone on your old tape-based answering machine. And uh, as such, a little technical note here, uh, the frequency response, if you remember those old tape-based machines, was not very good. As such, the manufacturer decided to jack up things a bit in the EQ department, meaning that the sound on this tape is not just a little bright, but it's actually kind of shrill, which makes things doubly annoying. Thank you for using this quality AT&T product. To record a message on your answering machine, insert the AT&T Telephone Tunes answering message tape into your home cassette player and cue up the desired message. Placing the built-in microphone of your answering machine 6 to 12 inches from your cassette player's speaker, simply record your chosen message as you would your own voice. 
Have fun. I'm not gonna lie, this next tape pissed me off pretty good. So what we've got here, uh, for the shell at least, is a lovely mid-70s vintage scotch tape C90 cover. And uh, I found out, of course, before I even bought the thing, that uh, the tape inside bears absolutely no relation to what this originally was. But here's where things get really frustrating. Initially, this was actually a pre-recorded mass-manufactured tape that somebody took some masking tape and put it over the record holes and proceeded to tape over the original content. And uh, the original content, after holding this up to a light and reading under the label, was originally some sort of audio manual training tape sort of thing for the Motorola MoCat CB radio. And I'm sure that tape would have been infinitely more interesting than what's on here. And uh, unfortunately, I've gone on eBay, I've looked all over the internet, I cannot find another copy of this would-be audio training manual thing. But anyway, um, what is on here, you might ask? Well, uh, somebody recorded roughly the first half hour of a special, a three-hour special that ran on NBC back one night in early 1978, and uh, that special was called 50 Years of Country Music. I'll let you figure out what that's about. And uh, there, as you could well imagine, there are no commercials or station IDs here. Whoever recorded this was uh, pretty uh, quick on the draw with the stop button. But um, this is even more frustrating than that because he was recording on some little portable tape deck and just holding the recorder up to the TV speaker, which wouldn't be so bad if he just left it in one place and left it nice and close to the TV, but he kept moving it around throughout the recording, and sometimes it just lands in absolutely terrible positions. If I had to look for some sort of silver lining with this tape... I guess I'd say that Glenn Campbell turned in a pretty decent live version of Southern Nights. Um, I'm not really sure I'd ever call that a country song, but, uh, eh. So strong that you can't kill it with an axe handle. And he was right. We call this program 50 Years of Country Music, but we know that we can't fully cover a half century in just three hours, or 30 for that matter, but what we can do and will is bring you the essence of country music and demonstrate its roots in all of American music. There can be only one place to start with, and that's with the king of country music. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys.
You know, one of the stronger roots that country music draws from is the blues. And you know, one of the greatest blues singers, pop singers, country singers, he uses his pipes better than anybody I've ever heard in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic <laughs> Mr. Ray Charles. Since we're on the subject of off-air recordings, let's run with that thought. So what we've got here is uh, definitely home to the most amusing scrawl I have ever found on a tape label of any sort, but uh, I'll let you read that during the montage. Uh, that and the J card seems to belong to a totally different tape, but uh, it's got some pretty amusing scrawl on it too. But anyway, the tape itself is home to a uh, probably unintentional air check of the major country radio station, country music, and uh, boy, we have a lot of that today, don't we? Uh, that station being KYGO. And this dates to, I think, about August of 1987. But uh, I think I figured out the person's story with the recording of this. Whoever recorded this evidently really loved the song Fishin' in the Dark by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, and uh, that was the group's then-current single, and it was a country number one. But uh, this person kept trying to record that song off the radio, and they'd always come in a third of the way, halfway through the song. They never do get the whole thing. But at one point, evidently, this person just got sick of trying to catch it when it came on, so they just hit the record button and let it go and hoped they would get the song. And uh, Murphy's Law being in full effect here, it never does come on. But uh, anyway, you know, really, if it were me, I would have just gone and dropped the buck 49 or whatever it was on the damn 45 of that song, but uh, silly Benny boy. Uh, anyway, in this cheapskate's quest to get that dirt band track for free, what I got out of the bargain were some genuine 80s country obscurities, a lot of which have never made it to CD, and um, some disc jockey banter, and uh, by the way, Anne Murray is going to be playing at the Paramount in September of 1987. Anyway, um, there's a full commercial break on here, which only consists of two ads, but still... Uh, station bumper, and um, I get the feeling that the disc jockey that was on duty that day was getting a little sick of the then-current country because at one point he digs out the original vinyl of the 1970 Lynn Anderson song, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. Death on the night he made him So in his mother's arms they laid him Told the girl she should give him And she started praying, no, you can't stop the love. Once it's got a hold of your heart, you know you can't stop the love. Can't stop the love. Ronnie Millsap, Kenny Rogers, on FM 98 KYGO. Don't call her up anymore. Don't ever do it. 946. Amy Lou Harris in my dreams tonight in Mo Bandy with Scott Douglas. Hey, she's a coal miner's granddaughter from Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, a former high school gym teacher and one of Canada's most enduring exports. On September 13th, the Joseph P. Gould Paramount Theater, KYGO presents Anne Murray. Boy, don't miss this one. One of the premier concerts of the year with Anne Murray for one show only, 8 p.m. Sunday, September 13th. And tickets are on sale at all Ticketmaster outlets. KYGO. It's the guitar playing. It's the palm tree swaying in the wind. I see them sway. It's your feet in the sand. It's leaving the land on a breeze off the bay. It's a Corona extra across the border kind of day. Just in time for the football season. It's a Franklin Recliner Saving Spectacular at all four Levines. 
2101 Market Street, 3392 West Alameda, 72nd and Federal, and the new Aurora store at Chambers and Mississippi. You'll find a selection of famous Franklin recliners priced to sell at just $199, $299, and $399. And if you buy now, pay nothing in payments or interest for 90 days with approved credit on a minimum $399 purchase. See the Levine's ad in today's Denver Post. Then come to the fabulous Franklin Recliner Saving Spectacular during the grand opening sale at all four Levines. And so we arrive at today's great mystery tape, and uh, it comes to us by way of this honest-to-goodness 70s vintage Scotch C90 tape, and uh, it's uh, in one of those really annoying early cases where it's uh, a pinch case, and it keeps a freaking death grip on your damn tape. But um, anyway, this tape is going to take a while, so we're going to have to break this down by sides. Side one of this tape is labeled simply as HOTS. Now, this made me think that maybe it was like a dub of a k compilation album or something. To me, that just sounds like some sort of k or Ronco sort of thing. Uh, but what it is, is a seemingly random batch of songs from the 1975 to 77 time frame. And the songs themselves, again, they're pretty random. There doesn't seem to be any real thread in terms of genre or anything. But anyway, the songs themselves, amongst the highlights or lowlights, uh, there's this totally inexplicable and really lousy country version of Andy Gibbs' 1977 hit, I Just Want to Be Your Everything. And I think I'm going to stick with Andy's version. Uh, but then there's a, uh, a Crystal Gale song on here that was taped off the radio, but unfortunately, whoever recorded the thing hit the stop button before the DJ was finished with the back announce, so I never did get the song name or what station it was on or whatever. Um, and then for me, the great highlight, even though I already own the record, um, and even though it's the crappy k edit, it's got my all-time personal favorite slab of 70s sleaze pop. And uh, I'll throw in a few seconds of that at the end of the montage. Sing along if you know the words. And I have a feeling you're going to know the words to some of these. Side two of this tape is where things go pretty well off the rails, but it doesn't start that way. It actually starts with, uh, again, somebody with their little portable tape recorder held up to the speaker of the TV, and it's a bit of a news story from KBTV here in Denver, which is now KUSA and has been for 30 odd years. But anyway, uh, this story is on the winners of some sort of like kindergarten, first grade pollution answers contest, you know, ways to cut down on pollution. So drive your car less, that sort of thing. But uh, this there's a kid in the room and the kid is, I think, one of the winners. I can't quite confirm that. And the kid seems to understand that he has won something, but he doesn't really quite seem to grasp the whole notion of contests 
and can't seem to figure out why his friend hasn't been named and all that. And some might argue that this is kind of an adorable dialogue. I don't because I hate children, but that's aside the point. Anyway, after that, the tape then goes just right off the rails. We are treated to a 20-minute conversation between an adult man and woman, and it was recorded by the guy, obviously, as you will hear. And the conversation's a bit awkward, and it touches on some unique things like drug use and personal conquests, uh, if you get my drift. But I think the goal was that this guy is a member of some sort of explorers or scavenger hunters group or something, and she's a member of one, uh, some competing organization, or maybe they're part of the same club, but they're on different teams, you know, that sort of thing. And so what he's trying to do is he is trying to glean some information from her in between these just little bits of random conversation. And uh, given that they seem to be looking at paper, presumably maps, um, whenever he hits upon a piece of information that he wants, a real smooth, smart cookie that he is, he tries to start tapping on the table in Morse code to take down the information to get back to later. And uh, he does an absolutely lousy job at it. which included tuning up your car, riding a bicycle, or walking instead of using autos. And one student even came up with a giant trash collector called the Orange Crusher. The first grade winners were Todd Crawley, Tony Lapisi, and Tammy Carr. The second grade winners were Sadie Fox, Pat Maven, and Stuart Strutler. Tax cuts for virtually every state taxpayer, maybe just around the corner. That story when Nine News continues. Everybody can. 
tits, the, the short dashes and the long dashes. And so we are down to today's final tape, and let me just get the obligatory intro out of the way here. Just let me get into character. And welcome to another installment of Oddity Archive After Dark. Anyway, uh, when I found this tape, I posted the cover to the Facebook and Twitter pages, and I said something to the effect of, please, dear God, do not let this be an archivism. And, uh, of course, like some sort of cruel joke, within the first minute of listening to this thing, I knew I was going to have to discuss it to some degree. And, uh, yes, this is indeed a pornographic audio tape, and it's called Hired Stud Will Travel. And uh, now you know the whole plot. And this tape is just one of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard, so there's plenty of funny stuff on here. Um, and it's definitely not sexy at all, but unfortunately it's sick enough that it very much earns its X rating, and as such, I can't really excerpt a whole lot for you from this one. But um, anyway, um, this tape... <laughs> uh, I can't play much for you, but I, I guess I would like to try and describe at least some representative sample of this tape. So, um, there is no gentle way of putting this. At one point, oral sex is being performed, but this time it's the guy on the, uh, giving end. And, um, in spite of this, he is somehow able to speak perfectly clearly and calmly while performing the deed. Because he has two mouths, apparently. But, uh, anyway, of what I can play for you from this thing, this is home to some of the dumbest dialogue I have ever heard, and home to some of the absolute worst acting probably in the history of the dramatic arts. Uh, which is to say that even by porn standards, this is really bad. And to add insult to injury, the lead, uh, actor on here sounds like the bastard offspring of W.C. Fields and Don Adams. I believe in you, but I'm a restless stud with a hard prick, and you know it. I guess all I can do is hope that you come back to New York soon and you move in with me again. There you headed for, darling. I figure I'll hit Washington first. Always oh. wanted to ride that Metro liner. Here, get that pencil and write it down. In cage, put down. Hired stud will travel. Hired stud. Always thinking about money, aren't you? I'll give you enough to get you out of town, darling. Good. Let's drive out to my place and I'll fix you some dinner. Fine. A nice juicy steak, I hope. Oh, you can have anything you want, stud. A steak, a baked potato, and my pussy for dessert. How's that? Wonderful. Let's get going. Right down and relax. Where are you headed? Washington. Oh, me too. I've got an apartment on Massachusetts Avenue. Are you going there on business? You might say that. Oh, what kind of business are you in anyway? I'm a hired stud. Oh? Oh, what's that? 
I f beautiful women and get paid for it. It's a combination of business and pleasure. I've never heard of a male prostitute before. I thought only women went into that. I'm not a prostitute. It's just that there's a lot of lonely women around who need a good f And they're willing to give me a place to stay and some coins in exchange for my car. I'm lonely and I need a f but it never occurred to me to pay for it. Well, baby, with those beautiful f of yours and that ass, it wouldn't cost you very much. Just let me stay at your apartment and give me some spending money. Okay, I'm game. I'll try anything once. But how do I know you're any good? I'll give you a free sample. And if you like it, we'll team up. If not, no hard feelings. Fair enough. I like the way your ass wobbles when you walk. And your tits bounce up and down. I know. I don't wear a brassiere because I'm sexier without it. You sure are. Well, Gloria, are you satisfied? Am I hired? Wow, I'd hire you any time. You can stay here as long as you want, and I'll give you all the money you need. Where have I heard those words before? You don't know it, baby, but that's the story of my life. Hired stars will travel. I think I can safely say that I am never going to have any kind of sexual feeling again. I hope you're happy. Anyway, um, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I am probably going to be battling some sort of mold-induced virus and probably a, a touch of pneumonia to boot because... I'm going to go take a shower now. A really long shower. Like a two-week long shower. It's the smooth, easy fear. It's common in fear. Down around Mexico way. It's a Corona Extra. Cross the border kind of day. It's a Corona. KYGO, there's three in a row. I've tried fishing in the dark once, but 